Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a session from the Hyperledger Foundation. I represent Shane Yard, which is a member of the Hyperledger Foundation. And um, today I will be speaking about Hyperledger Fabric and AI for delivering trusted solutions. Uh, enterprise solutions that leverage the AI technologies. So, something about Chainyard. Uh, Chainyard is a company that was founded. Um, way, you know, Chainyard is a company that was uh, founded back in 2015. Primarily deals with consulting and advisory services. We focus on a few areas like blockchain, cloud and DevOps, AI, machine learning and UI UX. We also have a solutions group that uh, develops solutions for based on hyperledger technologies. Our core solution is called Trust Your Supplier. And Trust Your Supplier is a supplier qualification, supplier uh, risk assessment platform. What is Trust Your Supplier? Trust Your Supplier is a is a consortium that brings buyers and suppliers to collaborate on a common platform. It allows governance of vendor data. It provides suppliers with a digital wallet, a digital passport that allows them to carry their identity and all their verified proofs and credentials. It allows reporting and analytics Buyers can onboard suppliers. Buyers can complete a complete risk assessment and compliance of suppliers they want to do business with. And lastly, there's a lot of automation and integration with the enterprise platforms that buyers have, whether it's an ERP system or whether it's a CRM system, or it could be any third party sources of data from Moody's or from uh, Dun & Bradstreet, EcoWardis, any of those third-party validators. Briefly about the architecture of Trust Your Supplier and how does it fit into the Hyperledger ecosystem. So if you look at the diagram, you can see that the core TYS application consists of the application components as well as the client side that faces the blockchain. So TYS leverages Hyperledger Fabric enterprise blockchain technology and within this blockchain we have multiple channels. One channel that focuses purely on suppliers, another channel that focuses on decentralized identity and the third channel that focuses on integration, all the requests and responses that go between supplier, between TYS and the third party validators or between TYS and the enterprises that are members of this consortium. So it's a three channel network and it's based on Hyperledger Fabric. The entire technology, there's a very rich user interface that's based on uh, React. Some interesting components are the marketplace. The marketplace is a marketplace of third party validators who drop their apps, their applications into this, into this and some of the apps are priced some of them are free. So when a buyer gets into the TYS platform and looks at a supplier, the buyer can actually see all the risk and compliance scores come alive on their screens. In addition to that, TYS also supports a rich analytics platform. Currently, the analytics is based on historical data as well as uh, Power BI powered analytics, dashboard analytics. It provides a rich view of, uh, you know, the history of how many suppliers were invited, what was the acceptance rate, how many suppliers qualified, how many buyers are there, a lot of rich data. In addition to that, we are now powering it with AI. AI that is generative in nature, AI that is powered by a pool of LMs, language models. I'm not saying LLMs, Within TYS, we do want to power it with LMs that are small and purpose built. That's where this whole talk comes in, is how do we leverage fabric and 
analytics to have a very trusted AI experience. Briefly, there are many categories of uh, AI, and this is taken right out of Meta and Microsoft. And the four things that we focus on within TYS are core machine learning, which is predictive, which is classification, association, natural language processing, that kind of technology. We focus on generative AI and NLPs. That's the enterprise focus of TYS. Within Trust Your Supplier, we've done a number of proof of concepts to figure out what our customers want, what our suppliers are interested in, and what are those use cases. A number of these use cases are, which we have experimented and seen, include chat, Q&A, uh, FAQ assistant, Suppliers have to fill a lot of questionnaires, so how can we simplify that using AI? Uh, Pre-populated questionnaires that suppliers have to comply with, whether it's financial, whether it is uh, 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 with uh, you know compliance with labor la labor laws, conflict minerals, um, any of those child labor act practices. How can we pre-populate them? We also see risk assessments. How can AI be used for doing risk assessment of suppliers? How can AI be used for prof profile anomalies? Suppliers provide you with some data, but in actuality, there's a discrepancy between what the supplier says versus what the market sees. And lastly, profile creation. Most supplier profiles can be created using AI technology by looking at scraping public sources of data, even public sources of curated data like Moody's Grid or RDS or Dun & Bradstreet data, EcoWatt's data. That data is fed into TYS analytics platform. From analytics, we do want to make sure that trust, that the Hyperledger fabric provides a trust layer for all these little use cases. A simple architectural view of TYS Gen AI architecture. We take all the enterprise data that is collected, whether it's collected through questionnaires or whether it's inside the Hyperledger Fabric database. We run it, we curate it, we do all the embeddings, and we have enterprise knowledge databases. We use our fine-tuned LLMs, our LMs, and our use cases essentially leverage the fine-tuned LMs in order to provide insights. So supplier requests and responses, generated responses, go through this simplified architecture. Our enterprise-specific Gen AI models also interact with through our enterprise, have an enterprise interface, as well as they provide a trust interface into a Hyperledger fabric platform. Now, key challenges. There are very key challenges when you try to do AI and machine learning. How can you provide trust? When an AI module or an AI LM provides an insight, can you trust it? Can the blockchain play a role in terms of providing trust to the enterprise? There are a number of issues in terms of there are design time challenges. Are you, not, are you training your LMs with the right sources of data? Are you choosing the right LMs and agents? Are you protecting sensitive data, private data? A number of design time requirements are there when you do AI modeling. And again, during runtime, you want to protect your models from prompt injections, from inappropriate queries and response from inappropriate responses, and a number of other issues that can arise during runtime. So we have design time issues and runtime issues. What we are proposing here is marrying the AI stack with the blockchain stack in order to provide model lifecycle management. So models are assets, prompts are assets, agents are assets, all these assets have to be managed, and if you can manage them effectively through a governance process that is powered by blockchain, 
then we have managed to have a model life cycle management and the insights can be trusted. At the base layer, you can see in our stack, it's all the LMs and the connectors and the vector databases. So in an AI platform, you don't leverage just one LM. That is multiple LMs that have been fine-tuned for different purposes, multiple vector databases for different purposes. And then obviously, we can use frameworks like Langchain or Lama Index. On top of it, are built the foundational use cases like our chat, our uh, profile creation, and so many other things, followed by a security layer that provides guardrails from requests and responses. And of course, the back end, the blockchain allows that trust to be enabled. On the front end is the curated enterprise data that is used for powering this stack. Hyperledger Fabric as a trust anchor. Can Hyperledger Fabric provide trust to this architecture. So on the design side, at design time, we can use Hyperledger like Fabric to provide model lifecycle management. Asset registration, assets can be models, prompts, agents, uh, reasoning, uh, pieces of logic, all of them can be treated as assets and that life cycle can be managed within the blockchain. Model registration, creation of the metadata, all that can be registered within a blockchain environment and in turn, models can get cryptographic credentials. So essentially, we can actually activate models using cryptographic credentials rather than anybody running any model and not being able to trust the insights or the outcomes that are generated. So essentially, what we are saying is within TYS, we can trigger a model after it cryptographically gets verified and validated and authenticated. During runtime, the foundational use cases, not only do they get authorized, but every request, response, the data consumed, all of that is recorded on the chain. So we have a history every time that the model runs. We have a history of its execution, what kind of requests were put in, what kind of responses are generated, why did it generate the response, what kind of sources of data did it use in order to generate that response. That's the whole premise of trusted AI, which is AI plus blockchain equal to trusted enterprise AI. A little bit about guardrails. The key assets are there are users who are going to use models, and then you have models and agents, and you have prompts, and there are many others. Those are all assets. These assets can be given identities, they can be they can be assigned roles, they can be grouped so that related set of models perform a task. And essentially, if we can manage these through identity, role, and permissions, then we have achieved controlling and governing all the assets that essentially drive an AI solution. So the entire goal is finally managing the life cycle of models and at runtime managing the execution cycle of these models is trusted AI. With that, I stop. Thank you.